Before you start building the skeleton, make sure layer bones is set current. You'll start by building the spine bone. The spine bone is the easiest bone chain to build as it's centered to the character and doesn't need to be moved or mirrored. Start in the left view. This will orient the local Z axis of the spine bones to that view. As mentioned before, this favors the bending of the spine forward and backward as a primary rotation. Actually, you're going to need two chains, one for the pelvis pointing down and one for the spine moving up all the way to the top of the head. Start with the spine. Go to the Create Systems tab and click the Bones tool. Ultimately, you want to ensure that the bone chain you create has bones that are properly positioned to rotate the chain in specific joint placements. However, a useful approach is to position the chain first and then go back and fine-tune the joint placements. Here, you use three bones for the spine, one bone for the neck and one for the head. Depending on the complexity of the character, you may decide to have more or less bones. Unless you have specific needs, you won't need more than two or three spine bones to rig a character for games. Start clicking away to create the spine. Depending on the width and height values, the size of the bones could be more or less large. Undo the bone chain if necessary and set the width and height values to 1. Click to create the spine, neck, and head bones roughly in place. Right click to end the process. Bone sizes can be important when the time comes to skin the character to the skeleton. This depends on the rigger's workflow when using the skin modifier. If the rigger elects to skin the character based on skin envelopes, then bone sizes become important. If the rigger elects to use skin weights, vertex weights, then bone sizes become irrelevant. Weighting vertices is often the method of choice for professional riggers. It is the method you will learn about later in this tutorial. This is why you can afford to have what are seemingly small sized bones for the skeleton. At this time, notice that you cannot reposition the bones in any controllable fashion. For that, you need to access the Bone Tools dialog from the Animation menu and enable Bone Edit Mode. Now you can use the Move tool to reposition individual bones so that the joints are placed where you need them. Even though a real spine is further back in the body, placing it a little bit more centered actually helps when rigging a 3D character. Notice also that in this video, the first two spine bones are smaller than the third. That's because the third bone is located where the rib cage is, and the rib cage is rather rigid and actually deforms very little. When you're done editing the position of the joints, it is usually a good idea to reset the stretch of the bones in the chain. This resets any type of weird or unwanted scaling that may have taken place when repositioning the joints. This is done by selecting the bones in the chain, and then clicking the Reset Stretch button lower in the Bone Tools dialog. Here's another situation to be aware of. Notice what happens if you relocate the head bone in the scene. The nub at the end of it doesn't reorient itself to stay aligned with its parent bone. To fix this, you can rotate the nub, but an easier method is to actually delete it. To recreate it in the correct orientation, select the parent bone, in this case the head bone, and then click the Create End button. You still need the nubs in the chain for IK and FK purposes. There are very rare situations where you can actually do without the nubs. Undo the steps to go back to the correct head orientation. Exit bone edit mode when done. Rename the bones in the chain. Name the spine bones spine 1, spine 2, and spine 3. and the other two bones, neck, and head. Rename the nub bone, head nub. It is also a good idea to give these bones a prefix identifying the character. After all, there could be another character in the scene sharing those bone names. 
To automate that process, select All Bones and then from the Tools menu, choose Rename Objects. Disable Base Name and enable Prefix. Name the prefix Zombie Underscore. The underscore is optional, but it makes for a nice separator between the character identification and the bone names. Click the Rename tool to rename the selected bones. If you test them out individually, you'll notice they all have the zombie underscore prefix. Another useful technique is to add a underscore bone suffix to the bone names. This works as a friendly reminder that these objects are in fact bone objects. This becomes invaluable as you start adding more entities to the rig in the form of shapes and helpers. Make sure all the bones are selected again and disable prefix mode. Enable suffix, name it underscore bone, and click the rename button once again. Verify the results. All the bones have proper prefix and suffix values. Leave the rename objects dialog open. Create a new chain for the pelvis. That's just one bone with a snub oriented down. Be careful not to start it too close to the spine bone, otherwise it would connect to it. In bone edit mode, align the pelvis bone to the first spine bone in position XYZ, pivot to pivot. Make sure you are not reorienting the pelvis bone though. Adjust the nub, but you'll most likely need to delete it and recreate it to make sure it's aligned to the pelvis. Reset the stretch on these two bones and rename them Pelvis and Pelvis Nub. Make sure the pelvis and its snub are still selected. Use the Rename Objects dialog to add both the appropriate prefix and suffix labels to the bone names. Close the Rename Objects dialog and exit bone edit mode when done. If you wish, you can edit the pelvis bone size to make it bigger. This will have no effect on skinning later, but it will make that bone representing the center of mass more prominent. In the next movie, you create the leg bones.